This lesson will cover the following topics. The valve controls for a four-stroke engine. Checking and adjusting the valve clearances. Compression checking. Let's first examine the basic principles of four-stroke engines. The four-stroke engine uses valves to operate. The valves are activated by a camshaft. First stroke phase. The intake valves open to let the air-petrol mixture in. Second stroke phase. The valves close while the mixture is compressed. Third stroke phase. The valves remain closed during the combustion stroke. Fourth stroke phase. The exhaust valves open to let out the exhaust gases. The valve controls always include the following components. A camshaft cam lobe. A device that can usually be adjusted which transmits the movement of the cam lobe to the valve. In our example, it is a rocker arm and a return spring to close the valve properly. Some valve controls do not require adjustment as they have a self-adjusting hydraulic device. This lesson only covers valve gears that require checking and adjustment. When the valve is closed, the seal from the valve head to the valve seat needs to be perfect. The cam lobe must not put strain on the valve. The valve clearance closes the valves, whatever the engine temperature might be. The exhaust valves are exposed to much greater heat than the intake valves. The clearance advised for the exhaust valves is usually greater than for the intake valves. The valve clearance must be checked and adjusted in the event of a fault or during engine repair. The clearance should be in line with the recommended specifications to ensure good engine functioning. Where on the valve control can increase the clearance above the tolerance point? On the other hand, where to the valve head and seat can reduce the clearance? The camshaft configuration must be identified before checking and adjusting the valve clearance. You should consult the technical documentation to find out what clearance has been recommended for each engine. Let's look now at the valve controls. There are different types of valve controls. Single rocker arms with pads. Single or double rocker arms with wheels. A tappet with shims. And monoblock tappets. Renault engines have single camshafts or dual camshafts. Engines with single camshafts can have two valves per cylinder that are activated by tappets or by rocker arms, or four valves per cylinder activated by dual rocker arms. Engines with dual camshafts have four valves per cylinder that are activated by tappets. Two configurations are possible. In the first configuration, one of the camshafts activates the intake valves and the other activates the exhaust valves. In the second, each camshaft activates intake valves and exhaust valves. In this section, we covered the following points. The valve gear has a camshaft cam lobe, a device to transmit the movement from the cam lobe to the valve, and a return spring. The valve clearance closes the valves, whatever the engine temperature might be. The valve clearance must be checked and adjusted in the event of a fault or during engine repair. There are different types of valve gears, single rocker arms with pads, single or dual rocker arms with wheels, tappets with shims and monoblock tappets. Engines with double camshafts can have two or four valves per cylinder. Engines with dual camshafts have four valves per cylinder. Let's see the effects of the valve clearance. The valve clearance is too great and the opening control for the valves is noisy. The engine's performance is reduced as the opening time for the valves is considerably reduced. The clearance is insufficient and causes rough idling and difficult starts as the sealing of the valves is affected. 
In both cases, the engine's performance is decreased and the fuel consumption increases. The adjustment of the valve clearance directly influences the engine air filling process and the compression too. Whatever the valve gear type, you must take the following conditions into account before checking the valve clearance. The engine must be cold. The camshaft has to be positioned according to the instructions in the technical documents. The tools that should be used are featured in the special tooling section in the technical documentation. Whatever the valve gear type, the checking stages for the clearances are as follows. Position it or the camshaft to take the measurements. Measure the clearance using a set of shims. Check that the shim that is for the minimum clearance fits and that the shim that is for the maximum clearance does not. If the measurements are not in line with the instructions, adjust the clearance according to the procedures in the technical documentation. We shall now look at the adjustment of different types of controls. Let's see how the rocker arm valve control is adjusted. The clearance is measured between the valve stem and the rocker arm. The valve clearance adjustment is carried out using an adjusting screw situated at the tip of the rocker arm. If the clearance is too small and the shim for the minimum clearance does not fit, you have to unscrew it. If the clearance is too great and the shim for the maximum clearance does not fit, you have to screw it. Let's see how the adjustment of the valve clearance for the tappet controls fitted with a thick shim is done. The clearance is measured between the shim and the cam lobe using the set of shims. The clearance adjustment is done while replacing the shim with a shim measuring a different thickness. There are special tools for these operations. You can find them in the special tooling section in the technical documentation. The thickness of the shim is calculated in the following way. Clearance measured plus the thickness of the old shim less the clearance recommended by the manufacturer. Let's look at the monoblock tappet valve gear. The clearance adjustment is done while replacing the existing tappet with a tappet measuring a different thickness after removing the camshaft. The thickness of the tappet to be fitted is calculated in the following way. Clearance measured plus the thickness of the old tappet less the clearance recommended by the manufacturer. In any case, there are shims and tappets with specific dimensions available in the spare parts shop. In this section, we covered the following points. When the valve clearance is too great or too weak, the engine's performance is reduced and the fuel consumption increases. The clearance checking for the valves is done when the engine is cold and with the camshaft fitted according to the instructions in the technical documentation. Whatever the valve control type, you must position the camshaft, then measure the clearance using a set of shims. For valve controls with rocker arms, the clearance adjustment is carried out using an adjusting screw situated at the tip of the rocker arm. The adjustment to the tappets is done while replacing the thick shim based on this formula. The new shim equals clearance measured plus old shim thickness minus recommended clearance. A monoblock tappet valve gear is adjusted while replacing the tappet with a tappet measuring a different thickness after removing the camshaft. Compression checking is one of the most basic checking tests for an engine. Compression checking allows you to check the condition and working order of the engine. To check the compression, you measure the pressure in each cylinder. The maximum pressure in each cylinder at the end of the compression stroke is measured when the piston is at top dead center. To interpret the compression checks, you need to compare the pressure measurements from the cylinders. 
This interpretation may reveal an imbalance or excessively weak pressures. This imbalance or excessively weak pressures may be caused by the following. The rings, pistons, warm cylinders, valves and valve seats, valve clearance, cylinder head gasket, or even the cylinder head itself. Excessively weak compressions or imbalances can cause loss of power, excessive fuel consumption, difficulty in starting or total failure to start the engine. Before measuring the compression, you need to carry out the following preliminary checks. Oil level and grade. Cleanliness of the air circuit. Battery charge. Starter motor speed. Compression checking should be carried out under the following conditions. Warm engine. Engine will not start. All the plugs, injectors or heater plugs removed and the throttle valve to the fully open position for petrol engines. Let's look at the compressions using a compression gauge. The compression gauge gives the measurement in bars for the exact pressure in the cylinder. On a petrol engine, the compression gauge is connected in place of the spark plug using an adapter. On a diesel engine, the compression gauge is connected in place of the injector or the heater plug using an adapter. The compression gauge must be connected successively on each cylinder. The check is done by comparing the results. For some vehicles, it is possible to check the compression using the clip tool. The clip tool does not measure the compressions in bar. The clip tool measures the cylinder compression efficiency in relation to the other cylinders. When starting, the clip tool measures the current consumed by the starter for each cylinder. The clip tool displays the results as percentages, then shows if the balance is correct or not. When there is an excessive imbalance, you need to do another check using the compression gauge. In this section, we covered the following points. The compression gauge gives the measurement in bars for the exact pressure in the cylinder. Excessively weak compressions or imbalances can cause a loss of power, an excessive level of fuel consumption and difficulty starting the engine. Before measuring the compression, you need to carry out the following preliminary checks. Compression checking should be carried out with the engine warm, unable to start, with the plugs and injectors removed and with the throttle valve to the fully open position. The compression gauge gives the measurement in bar for the exact pressure in the cylinder. The clip tool does not measure the compression in bar but measures the cylinder compression efficiency in percentages, comparing the cylinders to each other.